from Season 2 begins where Season 1 ended. Boyd is trapped in a well-like structure after entering a faraway tree at the end of Season 1. The bus that arrived in town at the end of Season 1 stops in front of the cafe after Elgin freaks out and Randall tries to subdue him. Elgin throws up on Randall, forcing the bus driver to pull over. Jade is dealing with the storm's aftermath, which destroyed the communication equipment he and Jim were trying to use to contact someone. Tabitha and Victor are in the tunnels below her house after the foundation collapsed, and Jim is in the home trying to clear the hole so he can find his wife. Tom requests that people from the bus help Jim look for his wife, who is trapped in the basement, and a few of the new people agree to help. While they are there cleaning debris in the basement, the entire home collapses, trapping Jim, Tom, AJ, and Randall. This causes everyone to panic. Everyone runs to the home to help, to evacuate the trapped people. However, there is a problem. It's getting dark. If you watch season one, you know that when it gets dark in this town, the deadly night creatures begin to emerge, and if you're out when this happens, you're probably not going to make it. Randall is able to make it out of the house unscathed, but the others are trapped when the group is forced to leave them because nightfall is coming. Christy recognizes Mari, her partner before she arrived in the town. Mari believed until this point that Christy had left her. The bus travelers are obviously confused why they have to go inside because it's getting dark. Donna arrives and explains to them that if they're outside when the sun goes down, they need to get inside. They aren't listening to Donna, so she forces them at gunpoint to enter the cafe. Some of the people are scared and they run away, but the majority of the people do go into the diner. When it gets dark, the night creatures do kill Tom and AJ, but Jim is unharmed. A lot of those people that ran away and didn't go into the diner don't make it through the night. Boyd is able to get free of the well after Martin throws him a rope. Martin is chained to the wall and he lowered the rope to Boyd if he promised to kill him. And Boyd agreed, but he needs to hurry because some of the unknown creatures are waking up. When Boyd is trying to free Martin, he begins hearing a music box and Martin tells him he needs to get out of the tunnels before the music stops. Martin mysteriously knows Boyd's wife's name was Abby, and that she thought this place was all just a dream. Boyd is only able to free one of Martin's arms, and Boyd sees the things moving underneath his skin. Martin scratches Boyd and tells him, My blood is your blood now. After this, Martin passes away instantly. It seems like whatever was in his arm was keeping him alive. Boyd finds a torch on the wall, and he opens the door and is instantly transported outside to some stone ruins in the forest. At the same time, Victor and Tabitha are in a tunnel and they see some sleeping creatures. Victor says they need to get out before they wake up. Victor sees a dummy, and he immediately starts to panic. The dummy has some significance to the evil that arrives when the music box stops. Tabitha and Victor end up making their way out of the tunnels, but not before Tabitha sees children in the tunnels behind what look like cages. The two of them don't have enough time to get back to town before nightfall, so they end up in the back of a storage truck. This looks like a place that Victor's used over the years. Victor reveals that the boy in white is his friend but he hasn't been around lately, but now he's back. Boyd and Elgin end up finding the truck as well, just in time before the night creatures can track them down. Elgin is a good person to save, because it seems like he's connected to this place in a similar way that Sarah is. The next morning, when the sun comes up, all the townspeople are dealing with the carnage from the previous night. They are luckily able to get Jim out of the house alive. Boyd also notices that the things that he saw under Martin's skin are now under his. Things are beginning to change around the town. The trees are beginning to change colors, and the supplies are not being replenished the way they once were. These things are new even to Victor, who has been in the town for 30 or 40 years at this point. When Victor returns to his room, he sees that Jade took his violin. This is an important item to Victor, and Jade strikes a deal with him, telling him that he will play the violin for Victor if he tells him things about the town. Victor agrees, and he describes to Jade a man named Christopher that played the violin and began seeing the same symbol that Jade is now seeing. He says that after he began seeing the symbol, everyone died. Jade began seeing the symbol in his dreams, and then Tian Lu gave him the journal of Christopher. The journal is littered with images of the symbol over and over again. Jade isn't the only one having dreams. Tabitha begins having dreams of her own during the day and night of the girls she saw in the tunnels. They're almost like zombies, and they keep repeating the phrase, Akui. The weird coincidences keep piling up as two of the individuals from the bus named Brian and Kelly are attacked by the night creatures. Brian doesn't make it out, but Kelly is found the next day with a pipe in her head. She eventually passes, but later we learn when Boyd is talking to Donna that the first person Boyd ever saw die in combat is named Brian Kelly. At this point, we see that Sarah appeared in the church basement when she went through the faraway tree, and she's been there ever since. Kenny stumbles across her and informs Boyd of this news. Boyd knows that he can't reveal Sarah's existence in the town after her history in Season 1. Kenny learns that Sarah was the person who let the creatures into the medical building when his father was in there. And worse than that, Boyd knew about it, and he didn't tell Kenny. Kenny feels betrayed, and he quits as the deputy. Boyd justifies this because he thinks Sarah is special, 
She could help everyone get out of this place. Eventually, the entire town knows of Sarah's existence, and they are beginning to lose faith in Boyd because of the way he's protecting her. Jim, fresh off getting out of the collapsed home, believes this is some kind of experiment after someone spoke to him through the radio at the end of Season 1. He and Randall become convinced this is true. Randall even goes as far as saying some of the people in town have to be involved in this experiment. Boyd continues to hear the music box, and when it plays, a ballerina appears. These things seem like a menacing prelude to bad things to come. The following night at Colony House, Dale is complaining that new people are taking too much of the house's limited food supply. At the time, he was cutting vegetables with a knife, so he had it in his hand, and when Alice tries to calm him down, he accidentally stabs Ellis, and it looks serious. It's nighttime when this happens, so Elgin and Fatima rush Ellis to the van sitting outside so that they can take him to the medical building where Christy can help him. Ellis needs a blood transfusion after arriving at the medical building because he's lost so much blood at this point. This is good and bad because Boyd is his blood type, but he also has worms swimming around in his arm. And he needs to get rid of these things before he transfers blood to Ellis. Boyd decides that he's going to pass the worms to one of the night creatures, and it ends up killing the thing. Now that Boyd is free of the worms in his arm, he's able to give Ellis blood, and it ends up saving Ellis' life. It's a good thing too, because we learn that Fatima is pregnant with Ellis' baby. Which is curious, because she was told before coming to the town that she was unable to get pregnant. Jim and Randall really start riding the conspiracy train, and they are sure that some of the people in the town are in on it. They decide that they are going to sneak out of their homes at night and stay in the RV so they can observe what goes on outside of the town when no one was watching. Randall ends up going a step further because he kidnaps Donna and ties her to a tree outside the RV. Jim is not on board with this, and Boyd goes out to the woods to try to retrieve Jim and he sees what's going on. While this is going on, Kenny answers the phone at his home, and a person on the other end says, They touch, they break, they steal, no one here is free, here they come, they come for three, unless you stop the melody. After hearing this call, Kenny begins to see some scary visions before waking up because it was a dream. Jade ends up talking with Tabitha, who says she saw the symbol he's been obsessing over in the cave when she and Victor were escaping. We also see a flashback to Victor's mother leaving him in a bunker, the last time he saw her and his sister alive. His mother was going to the tower that Boyd and Sarah saw at the end of season one, but she didn't end up making it there. She was trying to make it to the tower because she believed that if she got to the tower and freed the children, then everyone would be able to go home. After Victor tells Tabitha this story, she believes that that's what she must do. Cicadas begin to swarm the town in large numbers, and people around town are having terrifying dreams, which seem like just dreams, until Reggie's wife Paula dies in her sleep. She looks torn apart in the way the night creatures do to people when they are found outside. When discussing the cicadas with Kenny, Sarah says she believes this place feeds off the pain of the people in it. And somehow, when the people die, they become absorbed into the forest with their fears. She thinks that this is the case with their brother, because he was terrified of cicadas ever since he was a child. The town now knows it's unsafe to go to sleep, because something can attack them through their dreams. Back at the RV, it's getting too late for the group of Boyd, Jim, Donna, and Randall to make their way back to the town, because Randall threw the keys of the van into the woods. They are forced to try and stay in the RV overnight. That is until they are surrounded by night creatures, But when Boyd starts hearing the music box, something strange happens with the creatures. They stop. This confuses Donna and Boyd because they've never seen them do that before. The music is signaling that something bad is going to happen, and when something begins pounding on the RV from the ground up, the group makes a run for it. Donna, Boyd, and Jim are able to make it to the van and drive to the town after Jim somehow gets it going. Randall isn't so lucky. He's swarmed by hundreds of cicadas, and they incapacitate him in the woods. At this same time, Mari and Julie are also put into catatonic states after panicking and imagining cicadas are attacking them. Elgin remembers his dream from the bus. He says he saw the boy in white who repeats the same nursery rhyme that Kenny heard on the phone. Boyd takes Sarah and Elgin to the ruins where he first heard the music box. And Sarah can hear it, but it's underground or something. Sarah can also hear something laughing at Boyd for setting it free. It seems that when he transferred his blood to the night creature and killed it, and then burn the body, it's set free and evil, which can attack people in the night. Sarah says that if Julie, Mari, and Randall die, it'll be too late for everyone. Tabitha gets Victor to show her the tree her mother believed would get her to the tower, and she gets inside. When she does this, Jade is at the bar trying to figure out the symbol, when Tom, who's dead, appears to him and tells him he needs to go into the cave where the symbols are. So Jade goes into the tunnels, and the children start appearing around him. When Jade looks up, he sees the symbol in the roof of the cave. Seven children appear around Jade on stone platforms as he looks up at the symbol. When Tabitha gets out of the faraway tree, she's at the base of the tower, 
and she begins to climb the stairs. Boyd realizes during his son's wedding that he needs to bring the torch he found in the ruins back there to see the music box after he says, light in dark places. After lighting the torch, he is instantly back in the dungeon again, and he sees the music box, and he smashes it. When he does, Randall, Julie, and Mari wake up, and the cicadas seem to go away. Tabitha, meanwhile, makes it to the top of the stairs, and when she gets there, a boy in white says, I'm sorry, this is the only way before pushing her out of the window. In the last scene, we see Sabatha waking up in a hospital bed at St. Anthony's Hospital with cuts on her face. She is told that a pair of hikers found her in the woods three days prior next to a hiking trail. It seems that the combination of Boyd smashing the music box, Jade being in the cave to see the symbol, as well as Tabitha climbing the tower allowed her to leave the town. If you enjoyed the video, please like and subscribe, and thanks for watching.